What's up guys, it's Mike Munzel here with High Intensity Health. Thanks so much for tuning back in. I'm with my friend, Dr. Stephanie Canestraro. And we're gonna talk all about head trauma. Just a few minutes, she's gonna share some sound bites. So Dr. Stephanie works with a lot of athletes, a lot of celebrities, actresses, hockey players, football players. I mean, you travel all the time working with yeah. people. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm traveling around a lot, but what I'm noticing are these commonalities with mostly the sports guys when it comes to like their chronic head bashing, mm -hmm. essentially. So just coming up with a way to avoid them having these post-concussive issues because we've been able to identify things that have um, that we can help avoid through functional medicine, through diet. Like I'm also a chiropractor, so right. I do like the acupuncture and I do soft tissue, I work mm -hmm. on the fascia. Um, but um, one thing that became apparent to me because I had essentially a concussion from a tiny bump on my head because of my gut. So uh -huh. it ended up being, I had all these neurological problems and it was from like D-lactate building up in my gut, which mm. you've heard of from mm -hmm. SIBO, right? And so I started seeing trends in players that had this post-concussive type of presentation. And when I would do their stool test and their organic, organic acid, acid right. I would see this like over the top delactate or tricarbolate or any of the, like there'd be a lot of the small intestinal markers and then you treat that and they were going back and getting better faster and feeling even better on the ice, like from, you know, lowering carbs because wow. they're all like high carb. high carb. <laughs> they still think they have to have pasta for lunch, pasta for pregame, pizza post game. Like it's like, they're just feeding this dysbiosis. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's like something that you can look at and just seems obvious, but then actually like doing testing the actual work, and testing, and then getting rid of it has been, has been a game changer for some of them. One guy who I had, he had a post-concussive um, syndrome. He, his career was almost over. I, he had, I did his testing. He had H. pylori like through the roof with tons of virulence factors. He wow. had, um, you know, SIBO, all of, and that was saved his career. Amazing. So, so there's just um, a lot you can do. Um, I do a lot of testing for like BDNF, mm -hmm. so to make sure that they don't have the SNP for even the genetics, and then I'm always working with them supplement wise, like just to prevent them magnesium theronate. I'm getting them to do infrared saunas, uh, ketosis, mm -hmm. or in intermittent fasting at least, um, you know, depending on how comfortable they are, because like I said, they're carb centric. They're and carb centric. <laughs> trying to unwind that is pretty challenging, probably. I'd it imagine. It is really challenging, and then also you're up against like the team mostly yeah. thinks they should have it, and and like I remember one dietitian said, you know, if you're not having gluten and you don't have celiac, that you actually are missing nutrients. Oh my gosh. So I mean. It's tough. Yeah, you're up against a, a, a wall there. But what about the BDNF? How do you test for that? I've never heard about that. The BDNF SNP. Um, oh. So it's. Uh, through a lab in McGill, through mm. I use a company called Utrients. Mm. So Utrients, they so they test the BDNF SNP, and BDNF is brain derived neurotrophic factor. It's mm -hmm. um, it's the protein that codes for that new neurons and whatnot. Yeah, it, yeah, helps to create new neurons or heal um, neurons once mm. you get damaged. So people that have the mutation in that, um, they're not as efficient. They're the ones. More, like more at risk for post-concussive. That's one of the risk factors. Like I said, there's dysbiosis is the Great other tip. one. Yeah, dysbiosis is another one. I mean, and then if you think about their lifestyle, their um, EMFs, like they're flying, they have, they're always on their phones mm -hmm. or playing a video game when they're not playing. Um, their circadian rhythms off because they're different time zones different, and not only time zones but they play at night so if i'm sp speaking oh. about hockey players right so at the time everyone else is winding down they're, they're getting ramping fired up, up their cortisol and wow. then they're not really able to shut it down and then they don't sleep properly and it's this whole cycle so it's really trying to get them to shut it down like you know i get them to do the goggles to mm -hmm. block, block out blue it. light um, as much as you can. There's a lot of supplements, supplementation before bed, a lot of the time for the people who can't come down after playing and mm -hmm. can't actually get to sleep. So they have yeah. like a lot of things that change your microbiome for the worst. So it's a lot of like diet, it's a lot of su like, sub or as comfortable they are with supplements, mm -hmm. but I use a lot of supplementation and yeah. I see huge results, not only in that, but in like the the feeling of their tissue mm -hmm. and like the tightness of their neck. Like if you think of someone who has 
any sort of concussive kind of, or just even like how they get hit into the boards. Yeah. So, so they get a lot of tightness in their neck, but a lot of them, a lot of that is damage that's happened to their parasympathetic nervous system. So I get them to do gargling to like mm. for the vagus nerve. Um, you know, some, it depends where they're at, but sometimes even transvagal nerve stimulation. Oh, really? The tragus of the ear mm -hmm. with um, some other people that I work with, mm -hmm. vestibular exercises just to keep them healthy and everything like yeah, that. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing. It. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when we, th when, when we think about a concussion, most people just like reactively think about just the brain, but mm -hmm. you're just talking about all of these different systemic things, yeah. the, uh, gut health and, and you know, the parasympathetic tone. I mean, that's awesome. Wonderful mm -hmm. tips. Um, mm -hmm. So if someone has a child maybe that is playing rugby, hockey, mm -hmm. football, they get a concussion, what like kind of test would you recommend organic acids and, and stool testing then to kind of see where things are at? I, or? Would, I would recommend it for any athlete just to see even like before like baseline so um just to prevent them but afterwards i i would definitely do it i mean now it's come to the point where you can kind of see by their symptoms like a lot of the time if they don't want to do testing but there's vestibular exercise like mm. well i mean there's hashtag b first i get them to download that oh, okay um yeah. It's an app, uh -huh. and they do um, vestibular exercises with them, but they also do a baseline. So then you can see if like smooth pursuits or like, do you know a smooth pursuit? Like mm -hmm. it's just if you're quickly like scanning across, or if you're watching a car drive from like mm -hmm. right to left, or as opposed to like reading as a as a saccade. And mm. so it just trains you in different ways. So that is one way to. It gives you a baseline, but it also prevents um, prevents diet. CTE or C prevents concussion sy post concussion syndrome. Post concussion syndrome. I like see. the better like proprioception you have going in, mm -hmm. um, vestibular like your awareness of your body in space, the the better or the less chance you have of, of ha having a having a gotcha. Yeah. So that's just could you define post concussion syndrome as like just brain inflammation, like it's neuroinflammation basically. So if or someone's healthy and they get a concussion. Um, or they don't have the numerous risk factors, a lot of the times they'll get better quickly in about a week or so. Mm. Um, when these uh, symptoms continue or they start to try and output energy and then they get dizzy, or if they um, you know, just still have a headache, still yeah. have, like, can't focus. Memories fall. off, yeah. Yeah, so it can be like from one extreme to another, like post-concussive kind of wow. syndromes. But hmm. I feel like this is something we should all be aware of because we can get hit by a car, or bang our head. I mean, this mm -hmm. this is not like just applicable to athletes. No. I think everyone. What about brain mapping? Do you do any of that? I haven't done it, but I know people, people that do. do. And like, I, I work closely with people that are doing other stuff that I'm not doing. So I send them to people doing functional neurology, brain mapping, like who are watching them more closely with the vestibular stuff, and I'll work with them with like the supplementation, the musculoskeletal, the yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like always working together in mm -hmm. a kind of a team of It's amazing, Stephanie, I love what you're doing. So uh, final question here. So when you first found out that athletes, like when they realize that their soft tissue stuff is getting better via the nutrition and like the exercise, like is that kind of a paradigm shifting moment for them where they start to take this stuff a little bit more seriously? A hundred percent. And mm -hmm. and my whole business has been built through word of mouth. So one person feels way better, like then they tell their team member uh, and yeah. that's how they see me because that's they they're feeling like profound differences mm. in their tissue texture and pain after games and recovery and how much treatment that they need so that's so that's, cool yeah so that's been really powerful like right. just and you know when it's all through word of mouth you can assume that it's, actually, it's because people are getting better they're getting better yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's tough because I love watching like football and I, I like hockey, basketball, and I see what these people eat, you know, yeah, I follow them on Instagram and it's okay. like, these are high level athletes getting paid millions of dollars per game mm -hmm. sometimes. And the food they eat is just like stuff that should, no one should be eating. So it's, anyway, I love that you, what you're doing, you know, because yeah. I think a lot of people want to influence the sports community yeah. and don't really know how to penetrate that, but it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be like doing what you're doing, word of mouth, and then people get better and they're yeah. going to start talking. And I think people are catching on. I mean, working with the NFL or the specific teams, which I won't mention, mm -hmm. um, I mean, the food that was available to them was oh like, gosh. I wouldn't even, touch I would it. never even touch that. Like, yeah. And that's, 
And then they're going into games and hitting their heads at mm -hmm. high velocity, changing yeah. directions. It's like, it's amazing there's not more concussions. Yeah, and I know. Yeah, it's crazy. So Dr. Stephanie, I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Uh, you're big on Instagram and Facebook. If folks want to connect with you, what's the best way yeah. to do that? So it's Dr. S. Canistrero on Instagram. Um, my website will be out soon, and it's the Vegas Clinic dot com or healyourgutfirst.com dot com mm. um, and on Facebook it's Dr. Stephanie Canister. Cool. And I'll put those in the show notes below guys. Really appreciate you tuning in. If you like this content, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and connect with Dr. Stephanie over on Instagram. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Okay.